स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया students after the introduction lecture we will have to progress with one after the other we have a lot of items to be covered so this module 1 will have the second lecture on clay products and as we have a huge basket in the clay products we have I have given it like, like clay products 1 and the next lecture will be clay products too. So, if we look into the concepts that will be covered today, they are clay products and their composition, steps of manufacturing, brick as the most commonly used clay product and then types of bricks, characteristics, characteristics of bricks and we will finally try to cover brick masonry. Now, why clay? Out of all these things, all things available on earth, why clay and since when it is being used? Historically, if you see since 8000 BC, we are finding the use of brick and that is the first maybe unit or the simplest unit made out of clay, which is durable, which has strength, which is reliable that means it does not fail as we had discussed earlier. It is low in cost, readily available and easy to handle. So, when we talk of clay, it is actually kaolinite which is hydrous alumino silicate where you can see alumina and silica both are present. Silica is sand which is the maximum portion as you see 50 to 60 percent and alumina 20 to 30 percent. Lime here is around 10 percent available. See, place by place it keeps on varying, but remember that lime has a part to play which is the stabilizer. You have a color particularly when you see the most common item that is brick which is little reddish and that is because of the presence of iron oxide. See, it is around 7 percent. You have magnesia you have lots of alkalis within it and other than that there are vegetative items, organic items, pebbles, stones inside it. So, we have to know how to thrash them out and then you make it usable. Now, what are the usual materials which we make out of clay? The most commonly used as the building material as we see in our country context is brick. We move through the kind countryside and we find the application of clay tiles as you can see in the next two pictures. So, they are again of a different shape. You can see the two pictures differ, but more or less across the country we see brick as a rectangular block of unit. Other forms may be terracotta where which is again another kind of processed clay we will enter into each of these items and you can see a pipe below a culvert passing and that is stoneware. Again we have porcelain, we have earthenware. So, we can look into the basket one after other, but before doing that when we convert the clay to any of these items, we do need to know what is the role of each of them. So, silica prevents crack, shrinkage and warpage of brick or any clay item. Silica gives durability, but remember excess of it makes it brittle. Similarly, alumina gives plasticity to the item. It makes the molding process easy. What is molding? 
every brick brick by brick is molded out from either hand or by a machine uh, every tile is also molded out every clay item is molded out so alumina gives plasticity to the item and it helps in easy demolding and excess of it helps in shrinkage and warpage warpage means it is a kind of defect where the item becomes item becomes wavy so it warps lime helps the silica in the clay to melt and helps in binding all the ingredients so it is the stabilizer and excess of it makes it fluid or more plastic and it deshapes the brick or the item iron imparts color it improves the impermeability and also gives strength or durability what is impermeability it is the property not to allow water through it so it reduces the absorption of a clay item which is quite porous excess of iron will give it a dark blue or blackish color and it goes yellow if it is less in amount so by eyes by your open eyes you can distinguish a iron rich brick or a brick which is devoid or less in iron content so it will be pale in color again magnesia gives a yellowish color to the brick and excess of it helps in decaying or breaking of the brick so all these items together give the properties to the item now here there is another important part because once you get whatever clay in whatever in the initial form it is not used directly all these items are to be put into the furnace for burning or for being baked and then only it gets the characteristic so clay in its open in its original form does not look red but after this processing you get the red color to it okay now come to the preparation of clay as i told you you just cannot take some amount of earth and call it clay the upper soil or the top soil is full of organic material full of pebbles full full of uh, darts and dust and we need to take it out say around 20 cm of the top layer of the earth has to be taken out unless and until it is sealed or river bed so you have to dig out from the fresh soil what you get after unsoiling and take the usable earth and allow it to settle in one place where you take out all the vegetations if any pebbles by sorting so after doing this you have to keep it open in weather so that it gets exposed to the sunlight next comes the process of blending so when you get some amount of good earth you can go for blending so what is blending you have to mix it or churn it inside a vessel or a mill so that it gets uniform all through it is kind of kneading like you need flour so after doing so it gets porous and it is ready for molding it is done in a pug mill which is a v kind of vessel which has a central axle and is rotated 
by means of a machine and you have tooth like arms inside which you have your earth which is being churned and after there is a spout it comes out from here and it is easy for it is ready for the molding process. So molding, molding is making of brick. So there are two types of molding, hand molding and machine molding. So machine can do it faster obviously but we in our country still have the process of hand molding where brick molds are used into which the mud is pushed in, the clay is pushed in and it is demolded and after which is the process of drying. So to avoid cracking and distortion of the bricks, you cannot put these wet bricks or moisture content wicks, bricks inside the furnace. So you have to wait or keep it for sun drying or else control drying. So when you put it in the sun drying, you take some time for one or two days when the furnace is ready for the next lot to go, you can arrange them around the fire. So after the drying process is the burning process. Now let us see what happens here. So there are four stages as you can see. The furnace can take temperature up to 1100 degree centigrade, 1200 degree centigrade, but it takes gradually. The first part is the dehydration of these bricks. So around 450 degree to 650 degree centigrade, the water is getting removed. After that is the fusing process where the oxidation of silica and lime with alumina, all these things happen to make it a consolidated whole. So by 900 degree centigrade the brick is ready but after which for the next 200 degree centigrade you see the process of vitrification or solidification or gaining the strength takes place and after that the furnace is allowed to get cooled before you take out the bricks ready to be supplied. Now here again what you see inside a furnace the layers which will be very close to the heat may get higher temperature or may get prepared early. But in the process when you are baking say 10,000 bricks together it is very difficult to sort them out or take them out early and hence that gives you a range of bricks available from the from one single burning or processing and that gives you the opportunity to classify bricks into different types. So we are referring to bricks but it happens for clays also, for clay tiles also, it will happen for terracotta tiles also. So unless and until it is controlled heating you can you will get different lots or different types. So let us look into more specifically what brick is. So brick as you understood the composition, it is a clay product, it is a solid rectangular masonry unit made of baked earth. Weight is around 2.5 kg and Available size across our country is varying, however the length is to breadth is equal to 2 is to 1 and length is to height is equal to 3 is to 1. 
So, mostly available size we say 125, 250, 75, 250, 125, 75 that is, that is 10 inch, 5 inch, 3 inch. But these are actually ready sizes with mortar. It may be 110, 220 and 70, 70. Machine made bricks, they have uniform dimension of 100 into 200 into 100. So, 1 refers to the length, breadth and height. It may be 75 also, the thickness. So, across our country, we have varying sizes. However, it is very close to 5 inch into 10 inch into 3 inch height. Ready height means with mortar. Color is bright red. If it is a class 1 brick or a very good brick, if you strike two bricks together, you will get a hard ringing sound, metallic sound. That is because of the right presence of iron. And if you allow to fall it, free fall it, when you are standing say around 1.5 meters height, it will not break. So, you can test a brick on site by doing these two operations. It usually has a groove on top. It usually has a groove on top. which helps in binding with the next unit which comes. The shorter edge is called the head. This groove is called the frog and this side is called the stretcher. And usually the brick sits on, sits flat on its bed. So, below the brick is called the bed. It is usually brought in or purchased in thousands or also in hundreds, but if it is a big project, it comes in thousands and so is the cost, but individual brick costs 10 to 12 rupees across the country it varies, it may, vary, it may be more also. It should include the transportation cost. So, where from it is coming that also adds to the cost. So, if you remember these basic points, it will be helpful for you. Now, coming to the technical details, it is thermal, its thermal conductivity is 1.25 to 1.35 watt per meter square per degree, centi degree centigrade. It is a good resistant. If we go to the other properties, we have, we will see it varies between the different types. So, I have classified them first for your easy understanding. And you see, we report the compressive strength, we report the water absorption and also some defects. So, a first class brick, which is the best of the lot from the furnace, has a perfect shape and size. So, there is no warpage. As I have already told, warpage is the bending, it a surface which needs to be flat may become concave or convex. And the compressive strength of a first class brick is the maximum that is 10 Newton per millimeter square and it has quite low absorption of water that is 10 to 15 percent. Used for superior work, exposed brick work because it has low water absorption. So, wherever there is no plastering, you can use first class bricks. Wherever it is dry, 
whether you can use first class bricks without any plastering. You have an elevation, the front part is very important. You can use superior quality brick so that the facade looks better because the perfect edges are there. Coming to the second class brick, you see they might have hair cracks and their edges may not be sharp or they may be ununiform. Shape, size and color, it is red, edges not sharp. Compressive strength is little low, 7 Newton per millimeter square. Anything between 7 to 10 is classified as second class brick and water absorption is 16 to 20 percent. So, it has defects like fine cracks, fissures, that is gaps and these are recommended for general brickwork. So, for external walls which will be plastered, as you can see water absorption is varying, has increased from 16 to 20 percent. So, we need to protect it with a layer of plaster. Third class brick, you see the color has become dull red, that is because it is underburnt, it may have rough surface, it may have more of silica, more of alumina, it has become, uh, it has become D shaped, it may warp, compressive strength has reduced, water absor absorption has further increased. It, it may be de irregular, distorted and those are the defects and these are used for temporary inferior work and for construction in dry areas. And we go to the fourth class brick where the shape, size and color has become black. It is dark, it is overburnt and it is of no use unless and until it is broken down into brick pieces or brick parts and you can see that water absorption may be more, it may not be more, it may not absorb, but it has become a hard block. It is unusable as a building material, however, it can be used as aggregate. We will come to aggregate later, but it can be used as instead in place of aggregates in concrete foundations, in road foundations and it does not go waste. So, it is used some way or the other into the building industry. Now, coming to the checks, as I have told you strike two bricks, you get a hard ringing sound. You throw it, you get to know whether it is a first class or good quality brick or not, it would not break. How to do the dimension check? If you lay say 20 bricks If you lay 20 bricks one after the other and you measure it, you will get some dimension and if you divide it by 20, you get unit width which needs to be checked with a first class brick. Similarly, if you immerse a brick not only one, but six such specimen in six tubs for 24 hours. You take the initial weight as say W1, for six items it is W1 and it goes on, you take a note of it. 
after 24 hours you get the weight on absorbing water and that be W2. So, if you do W2 minus W1 by W1 into 100, you get the percentage of water absorbed by the brick and make the average and you can call the lot first class or second class or third class. So, say if the new weight is 2.8, and the initial weight is 2.5 kg as I had told earlier. It will be something around 12 percent. So, it will be a first class brick. So, this has to be done across all the six specimens you have picked up from the brick lot which has been supplied to you. So, you can understand what has what kind of brick has been provided. Compressive strength test it is the universal testing machine onto which you can check the test strength or the compressive strength. Check for warpage, you can place a brick on a table and if the bottom does not align with the table, look into what is the warpage. So, you can allow up to 3 percent, 3 percent may be allowed, 3 percent means with respect to this height 3 percent of warpage may be allowed, but a uh, first class brick does not have any warpage. It may happen in the upper direction also, so it may be convex or concave. So, this shows what the warpage is. Efflorescence, what is efflorescence? Some alkalis may remain in form of soda or potash inside the brick and that on as because the brick is an absorber you need to do this check because when it is subjected to rainfall these alkalis will react and become salt and will become white salt patches on top of the brick. So, you can check randomly taking brick from the lot, you can keep on dipping the brick in a vessel in this way, so that a part of it remains in the water and you do it for first day, second day, third day, fourth day, maybe up to five days you dip it and then take it out. After some time you will see keep it in for drying you will see you might see white white patches in these areas. So, that shows that the brick has alkalis within it and it is having it is showing efflorescence. Now, let us come to the other part which is the brick masonry, which is the arrangement of these bricks because we have seen brick as a very small unit and if you look into the dimension of the brick, what you find? It is around 5 inches which one person or uh, uh, an adult person can hold it in one hand. It is 2.5 kgs which any adult person can lift. So, he can use unit by unit and make his construction together. So, it can be done by a single person brick work. So, what is brick masonry? When the arrangement of the brick in the particular fashion to get a continuous surface because you are using brick to fill up or create a wall or a load bearing wall which will surround your 
space or define your space. Now, you can keep on putting brick after brick and create a wall, but if you have observed, you have never, you must have seen that there is no particular continuous vertical, no continuous vertical line on a wall. I will show you pictures and the wall is taking pressure of its own and on the whatever is put on top of it. So, the lower per part is taking the maximum load, the vertical pressure and for that uniform distribution, you are not allowing any continuous vertical line to be there. So, when a day's work ends, you may not complete in one day your entire structure, you have to have a toothing. So, if this is your wall, you will never see a continuous vertical line, rather you will see it is disconnected and when a mason finishes his work, he ends it like this. So, the profile remains at the end of the day like this. This is called toothing. So, the when the next day's work starts, he puts bricks here and starts from pushing brick here. So, now there are several ways of doing this which I will not elaborate, but this is two thing that makes the thing together. It makes it monolithic. At the same time, in one day you are not supposed to make more than 5 meter in this direction and neither more than 1.5 meters in the vertical direction. This is to make the whole wall stable, whole structure stable because the mortars will come out from these joints. So, what is mortar? It is the item which is allowing two bricks to get joined. So, this frog is there where the mortar gets in and allows it to get fixed with the next brick. So, how do we end a wall? If you want a straight wall, you have to break the brick or make it half. So, you can break it into two parts which is bat. It may be half bat, you if required you may use a three fourth bat. It depends on the type of bonding you are selecting. So, the beauty of brick is you can cut it into half in the transverse direction, you can cut it into half in the longitudinal direction also. And when you are trying to achieve any kind of shape, you can use the beveled bat. So, this is one fourth here and full brick here. So, these are closures when brick cut longitudinally, longitudinally these are bats, when cut equally they are half bats, when cut three fourth bat and one fourth bat. This is the frog which you can see or the indentation where actually the mortar goes in and helps the next brick to get supported. So, these bats and closures as you see the last point helps for turning or ending of a wall and you must remember the key points which are to be followed when we are doing brick masonry. So, you can see in one of these pictures it is all the longer face being seen the stretcher courses that is the longer side is seen in the wall. 
In this other one, other picture as you can see, some are stretcher courses and some are the heads are being seen that is the brick, the head side of the brick is seen. So, the width of the brick is wider part is seen and the longer part is seen. So, it is a mixture of header and stretcher. This is only stretcher, but what you see had been mentioned is there is no continuous vertical line. If there is one continuous vertical line, it separates the two masses. So, any kind of force coming, lateral force coming in, it has to face that is isolated from the other. So, it may fail, but when it is tooth thin, one inside the other, it will you it will behave as a monolithic item, a single item. So, if you remember these points, you are done with bricks and the brick masonry. There are various kinds of bonds, English bond, Flemish bond, double English bond, because different kinds of widths of walls are required. Walls can hold its weight from 3 inches even. So, even brick can be sitting on its wider side, on its thickness side, but usually bricks are to rest on their bed. So, brick thicknesses becomes more and more if it is a load bearing structure at the base or the lower floors and it gradually tapers up as because the load at the base it has to withstand is the maximum. Let me demonstrate making of a brick masonry wall. So, this is a 5 inch thick wall, this is the first layer and if I want this end to be this end to be flat. So, we have to as per principle we have to start with a full brick such that this line and there is no joint. So, if I would have started like this, then this would have se could se be separated out. So, we start from here and hence we need to start with a bat at the beginning and then we can continue laying the bricks one after the other. And then again we have to put one bat to either finish it or if it is to be continued next day, we can leave it just like that. So, on top of it again we follow the lower course that is the lower layer, we see the lines will come just on top of it. So, you can see this is a continuing wall, continuing line whereas, this has broken the line to make it discontinuous. So, again we can arrange it like this and we can stop here. We could have gone for with the other way also, we could have started with a 3 fourth bat or with a 1 fourth bat or a 3 fourth bat and then we could have again continued with the bricks one after the other and we could have ended with another notch which is 1 fourth thick. So, we could have repeated the same thing using brick after brick and finally, we see here we get a notch of one fourth, here we get a notch of half brick. So, this is the toothing. So, next day if the construction starts, it will start with a full brick to be inserted from here. So, the next day when it is added, so here the binding takes place. Similarly, when it is starting from here, we can actually place <coughs> another brick which will allow the binding process and eventually what you see in the elevation that none of the lines are continuous. So, no vertical line is continuous, the lower two lines are set 
half brick apart aside. They have started with one brick bat, half bat and then it has continued. In the other course what we see we have started with a three fourth bat which you can see here and we have started continuing. So this is how we can lay the brick without getting any continuous vertical joint. This helps to make it a continuous, continuous wall surface. Now this is the case when we are doing with the half brick thick wall or 5 inch thick wall. Let us dismantle it and let us see if it is a full brick thick wall what happens. So in a full brick thick wall if you keep on arranging this like this and you follow the same principle like having bricks in this direction and then again having bricks in a staggered way as you, do, as you had seen. Yes, eleva elevation wise you are complying, but if you try to see the other way this entire block can be shifted, this entire block can be shifted. So what is happening? These two layers are not bound together, these two walls. So it has become a separate wall. So in the vertical direction, in the transverse direction also, you have to remember there should not be any continuous surface going to detach the two which forms together a full brick thick wall. So in that case what you need to do? In that case you need to orient them in such a way so that the header course and the stretcher course form just after one after the other and that too there should not be formation of any vertical line. And then again on top of it you can bring it, set your bricks in this fashion. So if you see the elevation you will see if you see the view from the front you will see there is a header course, there is a stretcher course, there is a stretcher course and again on top of it there is a header course. Now how to end this? You have the closure. Here also if you want to end it you have the closure. This is the use of closure. Next day when you start you have to start here with a closure. So when you have a full brick thick wall, you will see that the arrangement is having a stretcher course as well as a header course. The stretcher course is the continuous longer face which you see and the header course is the shorter face which you see and this helps in binding the whole thing both ways. So there is no continuous vertical line which you can see here that has been formed here has been closed by this layer. So the bricks here which were capable of moving in this direction is locked by this layer on top of it. So any kind of bonding the basic principle is no continuous vertical line and use of bats and closures to achieve it. With all these I finish this lecture. And I would conclude that brick is a unique building block and it is the most used clay product. Being small unit, it can take any shape or form which is desired. You can change the rectangular block to any other shape if you require that is desired by the architect, but that has to be separately placed, separately ordered can be cut into lateral and longitudinal direction to form bats and closures for getting desired bonding. So with this I end today's lecture.